having a guest to speak to us. Now, may I reiterate uh, one of the goals and the vision of this organization? The number one call is marriage. And then the Lord bodies are at also in the direction of the youth, even the children. All these are people that has to do with the home. And we're having the first conference that is not completely marriage. This time is marriage, is relationship, but at the same time we are also taking a little step further. And that is bringing in the sense of purpose, bringing in something that has to do with vocation, bringing something that has to make us a better person. And we're stepping in, first of all, bringing this man of God in his own right, doing God's assignment. I believe he's known to all of us here, but eventually you don't know him. I'm going to be bringing him up in some few minutes from now. He happens to be a brother of one of uh, my minister, and he also happened to be one of my favorite comedians as an individual. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I've watched him over and over again many times. He has uh, caught my attention in many times when I watch his video, his YouTube videos, and when I watched him um, live performing. And it's one of those beautiful things to have him here. He already have his script ready. He's going to be sharing with us his secret, how he has zoomed where he is, and what it takes for someone, for our young ones, married or single, even at whatever age, what it takes for you to enter into that world. Let me say this, there are a few things that determine the money in your pocket. few things. Number one, the value the society plays on the work you do determines the money in your pocket. Now, in some society, they place high value on doctors. That's why our doctors and nurses go to America and the rest of them. We don't pay that much here. Right? Whatever value the society plays upon the work you do determines how much money comes to your pocket. So, in our society today, the society is placing high value upon entertainment. And so, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't get angry at that. You can't do whatever. If you get angry, you're just wasting your time. The best you can do is to connect yourself into the flow. Because there's already money, there's already attention in that particular direction. So the best you can do. Today, people today are start, they start, they've read um, engineering, they've read um, accounting. When they get to UK, get to US, they go and start to learn, I mean to, to go to school to learn nothing. I don't know what I'm talking about here. They go and do nothing. They're already accountant, they're already whatever, they go and do nothing. Because the society there values nothing high, that much. And so the best they could do was to connect to that flow. And so there's something today that the world, in this our community, have highly accepted. And that's the entertainment world. Right? You may not be able to go full swing as he is, or as somebody else he is, but I wanted to know that one way or the other, you can be a player in that field. And so we have to connect to the young ones, to connect to the elderly ones, I call him God's servant, who is here to speak to us, sharing his own history, and then teaching us some tips as to how to get along in the entertainment world. And ladies and gentlemen, let's say with clapping and standing ovation, let's welcome the black comedians of Nigeria. Shei Law, all the way from Lagos. Put your hands together. Let's work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for having me. Please be seated. Thank you so very much. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Can I do something very quickly? Can you put your hands together for yourselves?
I can always tell people, thank you, we can bring down the sound. I can always tell people, you give to people what you want them to give to you. You give to people what you want them to give to you. Daddy, mommy, it's a privilege to meet you. It's a privilege to meet you. I'm very grateful. I tap into the anointing of your longevity in marriage. <laughs> we need it for our generation. That longevity is something that is very rare right now. And you know, even, even in career, you pray for longevity. Even in career. Um, there are some people that I meet, and when I meet them, I don't hesitate to get a handshake and ask them to give me a word of prayer. One of them is King Sonia Day. And another one is uh, Evangelist Ebenezer Obey. Sometimes I just go and spread them money. I bow at their feet. I spread them money. Because I want to tap into their grace in the industry. Ebenezer Obey has been 66, 64 years in the industry with about 660 albums to his name. 660 albums to his name. 64 years. Such grace don't come too common. It takes deliberate actions to get such. It takes deliberate action to get such. And for me, by the grace of God, professionally, by August this year, professionally, I'll be 15 years in the comedy business. I've been funny from primary school is different from doing it professionally. That's why we say for comedians, uh, there is a difference between being a beer parlor funny man and a stand-up comedian. And you know, comedy has different branches. You have the stand-up comedy, you have the sitcom, and then, you know, we have the slapstick, and then we also have the new sensation right now, the Instagram comedians. I call them the social media comedian. It's a new genre of comedy in the business now that is making waves. But you know what? There is something that we call the ability to be terrestrial in people's life. When I say to be terrestrial, it means having a firm ground in people's life that gives you that sense of longevity. Some people will blow in your faces right now as social media comedians. And after a while, you start asking, ah, ah, where this person they? They blow so fast. And they fade so fast. But some of us are fortunate to have been able to enter into your homes and your life through DVDs. And so you deliberately wanted us, so you have to seek us out to get us. But right now, the social media has put so many people in your faces that even when you don't want them, you get to see them. They might become so popular so fast. And they can also fade so fast. There are some of those popular guys on the social media right now that before you used to be the one to go and search for their name and go and watch their videos. But some of them right now, for a while, you have not really gone to search for their videos. Am I lying? Because it is no longer as beautiful as it used to come. But there is... What I'm going to be talking about today... Is something that attacked the five F's of entertainment. God has been so kind to me that as I grow in the industry, I've been able to learn one or two things. And don't worry, I can make you laugh oh, if that is what you want. But if you want a shift in your life, if you want a change in your life, a new commitment, a new drive, it is not, what I'm sharing today is not necessarily something that has to do with completely entertainment. It's something that you can be practical about it and also use it to change your life. You know, I'm, I'm a Yoruba boy. 
I'm a Yoruba boy. And um, there is one very sweet thing about the Yorubas that I've come to understand. That before the, life of, before the likes of uh, Socrates, before the likes of Aristotle, the Yorubas are proverbial beings. Africans are proverbial beings. Eh? And you can say the whites are uh, 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 philosophical, but Africans are proverbial in nature. We, we tend to release a proverb that can, that if you tailor your life towards them, you can live a very respectable life, a very well-defined and practical life, and you succeed. And one of those proverbs that really helped me in my career is I remember one time that somebody would say, I don't know how many of you know that proverb. Sometimes you hear these proverbs, they don't really make meaning to you until you get into some certain situations and then you overcome that situation and then you understand what that proverb is talking about. I'll share a story with you before I go into the topic. You know, in 2005, when I decided, okay, uh, I was tired of staying at the National Theatre. How many of you know the National Theatre? You know, in 2003, I was going to the National Theatre with my 5 by 7 picture in my pocket. You know, we go there to go and search for auditions if we can get in the movie. You know, we go there, you sit down, you see there's some local and the rest. They sit somewhere under the tree having drinks. They already casted for the role already. So we, we are just going to see if there will be an opportunity for us to get a movie role. Even if it's just what we call wakapas. Let me even walk past the camera and take it home and tell them, see your son in a movie. Like one boy who acted in one movie and went to buy the DVD and he didn't know that they've edited his part out of the movie. <laughs> you know, people go through things in life. Entertainment is not so rosy as people think it is. Some people think we'll just jump into the entertainment business and then you are there. But then it takes a process. It takes a route. You have to follow it through. I was going there from 2003 to 2005. No role. And I would trek from Morile to the National Theater. Sometimes you just jump bus. You hang with the bus conductors. When you get, they won't wait at the theater, so you have to jump down. <laughs> and some of us became expert at jumping down from Danfo. You know, when you want to jump down from Danfo, that's why I, I use it to tell stories or to, to talk to some of my younger ones that when you are jumping down, don't stop running. Because when you stop, you will stumble. So, in your career, there is, no, there is no time to stop running if you don't want to stumble. Because the moment you stop running, somebody is ready to catch up with you. Because that space that you are gunning for, somebody wants that same space. And so, you jump down from that floor and then you run forward, then you stagger and then you keep walking. You know, you're going somewhere. You know, and, and it was a beautiful experience. I got there, although I never had the opportunity to get a movie role, but then I learned some things. I saw people. I saw people in the entertainment business, in the movie industry. I saw them drink. I saw them do all sorts of things. And I told myself, I don't want to be like this. Maybe one of the things that really made me become very conscious of my life, that, okay, I don't want to get... I don't want to be sitting under the umbrella or drinking and all those. I want a posh life. You know, posh a little. No, I know that the rasness is still there. 
uh, having grown from a butte meta and then oh, really, the combination, you know, but then, let there be a little bit of poshness to my life, you know. And then at the same time, I saw people who their spoken English is very, I call it crispy, you know, very, very tight. Somebody like, like, like Sam Loco Efe. You know, no matter how much he jokes, you know, he jokes around. When he speaks, you know that this man, oh, oh my God, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Men who speak, they command English. Oh Lord. When, when, you, when, you, hear, when you hear voices like the voice of, of Pet Edoche, you know, yeah, it's, ah, no, now you, you look for, let something that is sweet attract you and leave the dirty things to be dirty. You know, and after I've gone there, and then I started in 2005, you know, then I was partly also operating a phone call business center that I inherited from my other brother, whom you know, sir. <laughs> you know, so one night after I had, you know, we sit at the phone center, you know, you have your chair and a chair for your customer and then your umbrella. And I was doing that at a relay bus stop, you know. And one night, after I had closed for the day, probably all the profit for the day is about 500 and something naira. And then I got home. We were watching a movie, Snow White. And, you know, from that Snow White, I just came up with a joke. And I just told my cousins the joke. And then my cousin said, ah, this joke. People laughed. Everybody laughed. And my cousin said, do you know that people are making money from this comedy? That was the first time that it dawned on me that, oh, I can actually make money from this. That's why the fact that I knew people, very few people, I, I didn't really take com comedy as something that I would love to do. I didn't take it as something that I would love to do. I know that I was funny. But in my mind, when you have read Ababio from SS1 and you finish Ababio in SS2, um, comedy is not, the, is not the first thing that will come to your mind. I wanted to be a medical doctor. I got admission to study medicine, but then, you know, because of um, financial issues, I had to fulfill admission, and then things were very tight for my mom then. But I, I knew my Ababio. I knew my uh, Nekon. I knew my PNOKK. I knew my Afolayon. I knew my introduction to biology. I knew my essentials of agriculture. Uh, you know, I read all those things. Nobody said, I said, mm, I sabi from my introduction to chemistry, to elements and a compound, to particulate nature of matter, kinetic motion, acid bases and salt, hydrogen and its compound, you know, Boyce's law, Graham's law, I, you know, I know it. No, 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 no be. When I, when I talk to people about that, I tell them, I say these things because your certificate is your bragging right. It might not just be what will give you money. Mm. But it's your bragging right. So when I say I know those things, I know it. Archimedes principles, all those things, your waves, your Newton's laws of motion, one, two, three. I know, I know. I read about them, you know. <laughs> like I always tell people, some of the things we did... Uh, that could have landed us in jail. Thank God we, we, were, we were fortunate not to live that life for too long. Uh, some people that entered school, we were the ones that wrote their work for them. Uh, when they used to take us to a pair, and we'll go and camp in the bush, all those special center. We were the ones that were solving those questions that they take to them. Langbasa, inside Badore. You know? We did all those things. That was how much, of, how much I loved my books. But then, you know, sometimes you pray for God to show you your path in life so you don't toil too much like Peter had done. Toiling all day until God said, cast your net here. And then they said, we toiled all night. But God said, no, it's this place. <laughs> You've toiled all night, but it is time for you to catch fishes now. The ones that will make your boat to sink and your neck to break. You need God to show you your real direction. So in 2005, I decided I was going to do comedy after my cousin introduced me. And then he said, I should follow them to a church where they were performing. 
he was a member of a music group. I followed them to that church and then we performed. They performed. They said, no, when they introduced them to come and perform, that I should go on stage, crack some one or two jokes, then introduce them. I had never done comedy professionally. So for me, I just know that I had the jokes. So when I just went on that stage, I heard the microphone, pa, 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 pa. people were laughing. And by the time I finished, I said, thank you very much. That time, you know, your name was defined by your situation. <laughs> and then my state name then, I said my state name is Shea Easy. Because this was not easy for me. That is why Jabez needed to change his name. So when I come and say, I say, Shea Easy, people say, no easy. I say, to say easy, we for no day here, they hustle. If you see my neck that time, you will know that I was really hustling. So I went on stage, I made people laugh, and then I introduced them. And then a lady walked up to me. In 2000 and, I think 2015 now, or, or 16 thereabout, I was fortunate to be the MC at the lady's wedding. The lady, the lady came, walked up to me, 2005, walked up to me and said, ah, you, you are so funny. Please, we are doing something in our church. We would like you to come. We don't have much, but we will pay you 700. Eh? You will pay me 700? Just for, no, as she said 700, I repeated it, 700. She said, no, just for about 15 minutes. She thought I was repeating the 700 because it's too small. <laughs> she didn't know I was repeating the 700 because I know that from my business center, I will see from 6 a.m. till 11 o'clock to make about 700. <laughs> I said, eh, you know we form too. You have, you have to package you know, you put all the packages together. I said, 700. I said, well, uh, it's not as if, but because it's the church. <laughs> because it's the church. We'll come and do it for God. I was doing it for my pocket. God was only to come later. So, I went to our church. I, I met one comedian whose MC name then, comedy name was MC Doggy. But I know his name changed later to become a Maker Smith. I know some of you know a Maker Smith. You know, he was the MC. He introduced me to perform. When I finished performing, he said, Man, man, you are so good, man. Let's do this thing together. Let's MC this event together. You know, and then we MC the event together. And he told me they were doing a program in his church in December that he would love me to come and attend the program. I went to attend the program in his church. There was no money on me that day, so I had to trek from my cousin's place in Ebutemeta, my column street, precisely. My column street in Ebutemeta. I had to trek from my column through to Habat Macaulay to Onyibo. From Onibo to Apapa Road to Kostain to the Nigerian Buries. Then from there to Jimo Dutola, Donyi Bus Stop, Orile, from Orile to Koka, Koka, Cross Bridge, Yenta Aguda, to Mozanima Shan Street. Uh, we'll trek. <laughs> I trekked. And when I got to his church, I went to meet him. I, Mecca Smith, I'm here. And then he had me in his hand. And said, oh, let me go and show you to the other guys the, where we're organizing the program. And then he took me. I'm going somewhere. And he took me and he brought me to the guys. And their leader sat this way. That is, please sit, sit down, daddy. Their leader sat, the other guys, they sat down. And he said, ah, guys, now the boy where I tell you now be this. She is easy. He did very funny. And <laughs> God will package you. My, my palm slippers then, uh, the palm has left. It was the slippers that was remaining. And, <laughs> and, my, and my trouser was what we call Michael Jackson. Onfu. You know, when he jumped, we used it to do younger. Onfu. And then my, my blue, faded blue shirt. Very well faded. From, from blue that's not to see. <laughs> And then the leader looked at me and looked at me from bed to bed. 
the local people. And without nicey words, he said, a maker now. I'll tell you now. No, now. I'll talk to Tush pass this thing now. I'll talk to Tush pass this thing now. No, now, a maker. This thing over climb our altar like this now. It was this, it was not this person. It was this thing. And but don't worry, it doesn't matter what they call you. Because we are all living things. Mm-hmm. All living things. So this thing of you climb our altar. I told you. Remember that proverb? That means the trash that refuses, the trash can or dustbin that refuses to take debt will never be full. Because sometimes when they throw dirty things into the bin, somebody just comes and throws something precious. And sometimes what other people call debt, it's what other people go to scavenge for. And that's where they make their life beautiful. So you have to be, you have to be deliberate. After I said that, like I always tell the people when I talk to them, when you're choosing a career, be ready. Be available. And when you see the opportunity, seize the opportunity. Be ready. Be available. Seize the opportunity. I was ready. That day, I was ready because I ke- how would you try three hours when you are not ready? I was ready. The next thing is, will I be available and will there be an opportunity for me? After they said that, I could have said, why would somebody who is my age mate or probably I'm older than insult me like that? And because in their church, I could have said that and just walked off. But the truth is, is the church in Aguda. I needed the platform. So when they were going around, I was trailing with them. Like the team that I am. They will go this way. I walk behind them. And then when the program started, they were waiting for the, for the guest comedian who was going to come. They didn't want to do their own performance without the guest comedian. And then other activities has gone and the guest comedian. When God wants to create an opportunity for you, he will delay somebody. Yeah. Oh God, you don't understand. Yeah. While they were waiting for the guest comedian, there was lapses. They needed somebody to fill in the gap. And then they said, who can we use to fill in the gap? I said, are they here? Hey, look at me. Yeah, well, ah, this people go to sink finish. Oh, uh, yeah, we are calling him. Let him just. And then they called me. <laughs> Baba, he's ready. I was hot. The blood is, is hot. The comedy is, the jokes was finding a place to express itself. Oh, no, no, no. You don't understand. Sir, the comedy was ready to come out. Woo-hoo! And then they introduced me. I went on stage. I was dishing it up. I had standing ovation about four times in between my performances. And while I was performing, the guest comedian had already walked into the hall. So he was watching my performance. Oh, Lord. By the time I finished and I said, thank you very much, my name is Easy. The guest comedian was the one that ran on stage. And he put his hand on my shoulder. Somebody that was a thin. So the organizers became something to the person who they were expecting for their own growth. And he heard me and he said, this is a raw talent that is waiting to explode in this country. And he said some words of prayers into my life unknowingly. And then by the time we finished, the program ended. They were the organizers, but I became the friend of the guest comedian. And when the guest comedian was having his hand ramps, uh, wrapped around me, walking with me and talking with me, they were trailing behind. And you know what? Years down the line, 
They said I was a thing, but now when they see me, they call me Sheyi Baba. Baba Sheyi. And, and last year, last year, I was doing my show in Abuja. Last two years, I was doing my show in Abuja. One of them came to me and said, Ah, Sheyi Abeg. Ah, Baba Sheyi Abeg. <laughs> the one that actually made that statement came to me. She, I beg, Baba she, I beg, I feel, I feel performed for your show. I said, ah, go ask me this thing when you talk. Oh yeah, let this person. It was a thing, but they became Baba. That, that is why after I'd written out this thing and I called it the five F's of entertainment, I said, I probably omitted one that I should have made it the six F's of entertainment. And the last thing that I added was faith. In faith is the position of God. And I will talk about it. I will talk about it. I took the decks and I became a shining light. I could have decided to walk away, but I didn't walk away. So in your career, be ready to take some debts. They will abuse you. But don't stop learning. As long as you don't stop learning, you will make progress. You will make progress. I said the entertainment business is a vast land with great opportunity to explore. It's an open field to play with, with open invitation. Anybody can come in. Nobody's stopping it. Nobody's regulating it. That you cannot come in. As long as you have your talent or you think you can play, you're welcome. That is the entertainment business for you. But your motive for stepping into the field of play will determine how long you want to stay playing. Every game has a break period. Not all the players who take breaks come back to play. Even in football. Am I right or right? Not every player who go during the halftime comes back on the field of play. Those who understand the strategy of maximizing opportunity, self-development, and refreshing are most likely to return. Your choice, they say, will either make or mar you. It is important, therefore, to choose wisely as we look at the five F's of entertainment. One of the F's of entertainment that drives a lot of people into the entertainment business is fame. Fame. The second one is friends. Some people just think, oh, once I get into this entertainment business, ah, I will have good friends that will dole out monies for me. And the third one is fans. Fans. See, I have people hailing me. Everywhere I walk, they'll be hailing me. Mm. In Nigeria, you pay for hailing. And then, some people come into the entertainment business because of their future. And one of the apps of entertainment business that some people don't think about is foes, enemies. Mm. They don't consider it when they are coming. They don't know that entertainment business is about illusion. You create a perspective about yourself, an illusion of grandeur about yourself. An illusion of wealth about yourself. The entertainment business demands it. That you create it so that people don't look down on you. But some people don't know that when you create that illusion around yourself, you are also breeding yourself for enemies. Foes. And then the sixth one that I just added, faith. Faith. But we'll start from future. I said your future in the entertainment business is dependent on three things. Your foundation, your failure, or fortune. Your future. If you fail, you can decide to quit very quickly. Uh, if you fail and you don't have a good foundation in the business, you will fall out. But if you fail... You have a good foundation in the business, you re strategize, and you can come back to make what? Fortune. You can come back to make fortune. There is no easy route for anybody in the entertainment business. 
you will lose some and you will win some. But sometimes you pray that you win more than you lose. I say your future in the entertainment business is dependent on several attributes. One of them is hard work. Hard work. I say hard work is the effort you put in into achieving a desired result. Hard work is the currency with which you come into the entertainment labor market. Why do I say that? Sometimes when you are coming into the entertainment business, you necessarily don't need to have money because it plays first on talent. Am I right or right? It plays first on talent. Then your talent can help you get money that package you to get more money. So when you come into the entertainment business, if you are hardworking enough, because your talent will not just show itself without you putting in the work. That's why I said hard work. I have to be somewhere, I have to have created jokes before my cousin will say, come and crack, follow us this way and crack jokes. Do you understand? I had to have put in the work, which was what I did first, crack the jokes, and then the lady came and paid for the jokes. That's how you get into the labor market. You have to put in the hard work. And as you are putting in the hard work, you also need to understand that Hard work is not all necessarily about working hard, about picking the hard stuff. Mm -mm. It's about working smartly and putting in the right effort. That's why I say hard work is about smartly putting in the right effort to work. It involves studying and researching your workplace. It involves studying and researching your workplace. Why do I say that? For somebody like me, when I came into the entertainment business, comedy business, before I came in, I didn't really know too many comedians. I'd only known one comedian they called Ultimate Malam, who was doing DTD jams then, DTD jams. Ultimate Malam, who later became Mr. Patrick. That you people know as, they know the pop -am. How many of you know they know the pop -am? Uh, he was ultimate malam then, before he became Mr. Patrick. So I had known him going to DTD jams that they show every Sunday on TV. And then I know I go die. Somehow, I just came to know I go die. And then later, when I started working in the business, I started knowing more other people. And you know what? As I was knowing them, I was understanding, understanding them from far. And then I discovered that in the comedy business. I live about that's why necessarily, it is not necessary for you to get close to be mentored by people. Just put your sight to work from far. You don't necessarily have to be close to them to understand how they do it. Ask people questions about them. You learn one or two things about those people. I discovered that Ali Baba was like a father figure in the industry. He built his career and then he had other people work with him and he grew those people. He helped them grow in the business. And he became a reference point from those people. So you cannot meet an AY or talk about a basket mount without hearing about Alibaba. He became a reference point because he made himself a fatherly figure. He became a developer of other talents. And I told myself, I should also be able to do this if I want to become a reference point. And then I had the opportunity to meet AY. And one of the things that I also discovered is that when it comes to event packaging abilities, you don't take it away from AY. He's the best when it comes to putting comedy shows together in Nigeria. And he has done it over the years. He's proven himself. I have to also learn that, understand him and understand that. And then there is Basket Mouth. He brought branding to the industry. And he became like the face of the Nigerian comedy business. The first comedian to become a brand ambassador to brands. And you know, I begin to, how does this guy do it? There is a charisma to the way he works. There is a way he positions himself. You have to learn all those things too understanding other people. And then there is the spoken English. Spoken English. People who had the opportunity to MC events, top-notch events. You hear them speak and you're like, mm, man, I need to improve on myself. 
You look at the people, the likes of Teju Babyface, the likes of Taria Barrier, um, uh, Basot Taria Jr., you know. You look at the likes of Mr. Patrick Doyle. When they speak, you know, TA, you understand that aspect. And then you look at dexterity. I don't just want to be an MC. I also want to be funny. And then you look at who is that person that does this effortlessly. And then you, you look at Agodai. Dexterity. You can tell that this one, oh, any day he holds the mic, eh, he go get something to talk. And then you look like somebody, you look like, when you look at the people who do, who, 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 who do these things and they do it very well, you look like somebody like Gandoki. Effortlessly funny. His descriptive power is amazing. Second to none in the industry. And then I look at somebody like uh, um, um, Gordon's audibility. Can I talk without the microphone and people will hear me? That is Gordon's for you. When Gordon's, when his voice comes on the microphone and you hear, hallelujah. What do you do? You turn. Audibility power. You need to understand your industry, understand the business, understand the people who are doing it and you want to do it like them or better than them. Do you understand me? And like I always tell people, don't try to be like somebody. Try to be like yourself. That is why I use these words when I talk to people. I said the you in you is the real you. When you discover the you that is in you and you refine it, you make a unique you. You make a unique you. And so when I came into the comedy business, as I was growing, I had understood these people and I discovered something that was raining then was every comedian wants to make reference to worry. For worry, eh? For worry. Ah. And I'm like, ah. not only worry they, this Nigeria. And if they are not making reference to worry, it's Yoruba man, Igbo man, and Awusa man. Tribal comparison. And then I told myself, why don't you infuse Yoruba into your comedy? Tell it in pidgin English. Bring in infused Yoruba. Hit your punchline sometimes in Yoruba. Some you hit it in pidgin English. And I started doing it. And do you know what it did? It separated me from every other person. It separated me from every other person. And when people were seeing our videos, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Who be this boy where they always have Yoruba men? And because they were calling my name, while they were calling the top names, I was, I was covering up the gap. The gap was shrinking between me and those who were at the top because I decided to do something differently. And who is another person who shredded such part, Kenny Black. The gap would have been wide if he had decided to do stand-up comedy the way we were doing, the way we are doing it. But when he, he feels that music, what happened? And there will be this comedian will get voice like this. And you know what? It closes the gap. When you discover yourself and you refine it with a uniqueness, a difference, you close the gap between yourself and those who are at the top. I don't know if you understand. They said there is nothing new under the earth, but there is a way you refine it and it makes it what? Unique. And then you cover the gap. And another thing, for your future in the business, we're just talking about that, is determination. You have to be determined. I said determination is the passion to remain focused to, to, a, um, to, focus, to have success in a goal, vision, or idea. It has a lot to do with your persistence and consistency. If you're persistent enough, you're consistent in it. You do it persistently with a consistent goal in mind. The fact that you are persistent in something doesn't mean you are not open to new ideas. It only means that you are consistent with your goal and you are persistent to achieve it. When you're persistent to achieve it, you can do it differently. You're doing it this way. It's not getting you to that goal. You can divert a little bit. 
and do it another way to reach that goal. That was why when I was doing that comedy, infusing the Yoruba thing into my comedy, at one point, I decided to do the stammering stuff. And guess what? Which of the jokes make me become well known? It was the stammering. But I started with the Yoruba thing. But that stammering, when I did the crowd, who cock or die? Became what people knew, you know, knew me for. And when I go somewhere, they say, who crowd, who cock I say, who cock or die? And then people will laugh and they are happy that I'm responding to what they are saying. You have to be determined. And then there is humility. I said humility is the key to unlocking the channel of the flow of knowledge from mentors, mentees, and those who are within your group. I don't know if you understand that. If you want to learn, if you are humble enough and you give yourself to service, you will learn from those who are ahead of you. Which is what happened between me and AY. I have to humble myself. After I won the AY's open my comedy competition, I will go to AY's house. Before he wakes up in the morning, I help him sweep the parlor, help him clean the car, you know. I will stay with him for some hours. I will go home. Another day, I will come again, help him clean the, this one. Then, from staying there for hours, I started staying for one full day. Before you know, one full day became one week. One week became one month. One month became a whole year. And while I stayed with him, I will be cleaning the house. You know, some people will come and they'll come to a wise house. Some girls serve, they will come. I will be the one to, food that I cook, I'll be the one to serve them. They will eat, I'll still be the one to pack the plate. And even some of my co colleagues, when they come to a wise house, they see me, they say, ah, this one, a wise house boy. They were calling me a wise house boy. But you know what? While I was with AY, I learned to register the name of my own company. I learned to open an account in my company's name. I learned to start saving and packaging my books, keeping my books clean. When it was time to get visa, it was easy for me to get visa first. Because I had already learned some things from AY, I was able to pack it. And some of them that were calling me AY houseboy, it was my company that I used to do letter for them to get their first visa. But I was, at that time, I became their chairman. I was no longer a wise house boy. Service. When you give yourself to service, you learn some innate secrets. Some inner secrets to the business. When you give yourself to service. Because it is somebody who is available for service that will, they will tell, this is how to write invoice. Next time when I say, may they write invoice for me, this is how you should do it. I don't know if you understand that. But those who are not available will not know it. And that is why probably my whole company stands and I can say I want to go and do visa for 10 people that want to go with me for a show or something. And by the grace of God, I can count the numbers of people in the industry who had gotten their first visa because they were going to my, to my show. Some of them are big names today that they've denied before until it was time to go and do it and I did it for them with my, with my company. It wasn't because I had too much money than them, but because I understood the packaging more than them. Some of them even had better account balance than myself. But it won't stand because they don't know how to put it together. That is the power of service. You learn some things that people don't know. And then I talked about, we are still on the future. <laughs> it's quite long. I, I, I just believe that if we do it this way, sometimes I love to elaborate on it so that people can really get it. You don't just come. See, if you jump into the business like this, boah, when you are not seeing money, it will frustrate you, you will jump out. In fact, you will run out naked. You will come in with clothes. <laughs> when the business will frustrate you, you will run out naked. Oh. Because sometimes, as an entertainer, you can't tell somebody you are broke. When you say you are broke, they say, bros now, ah, why do they talk like this? If you, they say you, you, you broke, what do you want, maybe we talk. And they don't even know that that woman that is selling pepper can have money more than you at that time. That's, that's the illusion of the entertainment business. And then I say, let me read this. I said, the same thing you 
glory in might just be the reason you will be down. Your talent, if not subjected to the right scrutiny and change, can wear out. A bad tire can spoil the wheel and ground the whole vehicle. Talent is not enough means there are other things that keep talent functional. If they are not properly identified and applied, can destroy your support system. When talent expires, the other things are what keeps you for diversification or change. Let me explain that. Sometimes, when your talent is no longer the yielding power, but the fame that you have built, you have to diversify. Do you understand me? But your talent has to build that fame first that will help your diversification. I can use an example of a debunch, for example. When he was looking as if the music wasn't going to, you started hearing of Coco Gary. You started hearing, you know, diversification. It helps. You know, you are not yet at the top if you can still look down and see people clearly. Because the top is a place where other people, <laughs> they, they look like ants when you are down. But what keeps you when you get there and you can't see people clearly from misbehaving is humility. That's why I say history makers are humble. But you, that you are an ordinary history reader, you are proud. And you have to check yourself. Uh, please calm down. <laughs> history makers, those who made history, they are humble people. You that you came and you are reading your history to make it, you are ready like this. Ah, uh, go and bust your boy. Let your hand come down small. Huh? And and one of the other things that helps your future in the business is love. Love is the reason for which you build determination and willpower to achieve goals. If you don't love it, uh, it you will tired out quickly. You will be tired very quickly. That's why when I listen to that song, what love's got to do with it? Love has a lot to do with the entertainment business. Because when you love something, you feel responsible for that thing. When you love your career, you feel responsible for it. And when you feel responsible for it, you work to what? To keep it. I say somebody like me, the reason when I jumped into the entertainment business, one of the things that kept me going was because I wanted to make money and make sure that my mother does not suffer. And as I'm growing in the business, I'm able to help my mother. I started wanting to remain in the business so that my wife does not suffer. And as I'm growing, I'm wanting to remain in the business so that my daughter does not suffer. And I'm, growing, I'm beginning to think of other people so that the people who are surrounding me can also what? Not suffer. So there is a lot. When you love other people, you feel responsible for them. And it propels you to do better in your business. Let's, let's live love. Let's live love. Let's... <laughs> Too many things to say on building a, the right foundation for yourself in the business. You understand? You love people. You are responsible for them. I don't want to die young. And I don't want to see myself on TV that this guy is done with kidney problem. Donate money. That's why I told myself I don't want to drink. I don't want to smoke. Do you understand me? Anybody can fall into a hard time. But I don't want to be that actor or that comedian that they will bring on TV. They say it has liver problem. And I know that that liver problem, I'm the one that caused it myself. I don't want it. That's why I said, drink, you know. My house is beautiful. If you see drinks in my house, people come to my house and drink, oh. Pastor, I know they lie. <laughs> people come to my house and drink. I do events. They give me drinks. Eat there, oh. So people go able to say, if you want drink, go share your house. Hey, yes, they say it. Because they know, they, they say, I ain't get drink, but you know they drink. I have it in abundance in my house. I don't drink. Sometimes I want to go and visit somebody. I don't need to go to any supermarket to buy drink. I have the one to take there. Somebody still brought one cart, full carton of moe to my house. The other thing is in the house there. The day I want to go and visit somebody that I need to go and give them, it's just an open carton. <laughs> it's something to... <laughs> You know, but, but when you watch your life, you know what you want. 
and then you, you control yourself. You know, you, 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 control is very, is, is very hard, though, uh, because control is not just about drinking, you know. It's not just about uh, smoking, you know. Ah, women too. Ah, control. Ah, pastor. In this business. Ah, entertainment business. Ah, you will see them. Ah, I, I, I love you women, you know. You are doing well. Hey. You are doing well. Look at you. Uh, uh, you are freaky freaky. You are looking spicy. Uh, you are looking spicy. Uh, part of the idea, oh, mm, some of them wanting to be genuinely friends with you, and other ones just ah, <laughs> they are very spicy. First of all, they are, ah in this industry ah, is God, oh. Uh, sometimes we are falling, other times we have we have risen above it. We just thank God that we are standing. Uh, praise the Lord with me. Yeah. Uh, like I tell people, when I when I am not one of those people who do motivational talks and then we start telling you the impossible things, they say, "How do you make it? If you aspire to aspire, you can inspire." And then, hey, hey, Oga, let's be real with ourselves. Tell people the way it works. Uh, when you are telling people this person made it, and, and did you tell people about the credit facility he got that he didn't have to pay back? Huh? Did you tell people uh, this person became the richest woman in, 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 in Africa? Did you tell people about, about the oil well he, he, she got that she didn't pay for? Uh, he's the richest man in Africa. Did you talk about the, 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 the loan that the, the, the uncle gave him and they didn't ask him to pay back? So, so uh, when you are aspiring, you know who you are aspiring to. Oh, no. Don't go and, don't go and make mistakes. In your life, you will now they will not give you steps to follow, you will not follow the steps, you will not be wondering why you are not getting there. That's why I tell Africans the best way for you to go and meet the real people. If you want to learn the secret of business in Nigeria, go and meet that woman that sells cloth on Lagos Island. Go and meet that mama that is selling Amala that has died, that the children have continued to sell that Amala. That she was selling Amala within that mechanic workshop. And then she bought that place and built house. And Amala is at the, the damn part. They are using it to sell Amala. At the upper part, they are using it to rent. And she's staying at the top. Those are the people you need to know. Those are the people you need to ask for the real secret of their success. No people who are thriving at the benefit of government-induced environment. Understand yourself. Bro. Don't go and kill yourself. Ah. Oh. I don't know. I, I'm very plain, no? Sheila, no, I'm very plain. That's why I tell people, once you have seen me, you have seen me. I don't have anything that I'm hiding. My life is as simple as it gets. I can come down, I can buy bolly. I will sit down there, I will eat it. I don't have who I'm running from because I have not lived my life. I have not cheated anybody out of, to get to where I am. That's why when I grant interview in the newspaper, I say it boldly. I'm praying for God to favor me. Yes. But no politician can point to me and say, I gave Sheila one million naira. No politician in this nation can do it. I can say that the grace of God and my sweat is what I am. Completely. With, with, without a... I'm not... I'm saying it. I, I, hit, I say it every time when I grant interview. I hit my chest to say it. That's why I can talk to any politician because you have not done anything for me. And I have not come to you to beg by God's grace. It's not that like I, I I'm not praying for favor. I'm praying that God, that God, God will smile at me and somebody will favor me. Because favor also helps you to oil the wheels of your struggle. That's the truth. But God has not, such as not, that's, that luck has not smiled on me yet. Do you understand me? The kind of favor that I'm praying for. It has not come yet. But I know that as long as God remains, my favor will come. But without that one self, see, see where I am. God. God. When God has given you talent already, you are still praying for favor. You think that talent is not even favor. 
there are other people who have, who, who have the same talent that have not found the expression for it. That's why I always take people to Ephesians 7, 4, uh, 4, 7. You understand? He said the gift of God in a man. You know, when, when the gift of God begins to find expression,